you know, the South rap. She's from Louisiana. Uh, Big Frida. Yes, Big Frida. Oh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. So I was looking at this video of Big Frida, and Big Frida was teaching the kids how to do the bounce to her video um, rent. And I was looking, I was like, mm, I don't even know if, if I could. I mean, and I do salsa and, and, and <laughs> merengue, but I don't know if but I could really you'll, twiggle. You it's like pop, a, you can't. <laughs> it's it like a, it's, it's a twiggle. It's a twerk and a wiggle <laughs> that's happening at the <laughs> same time. And I may be able to twerk maybe just one twerk right just like pop it up and then i gotta sit down someplace i may be able to wiggle like i'm just shimmying out of my seat twerk. right <laughs> but twiggling, but you can't twiggle i can't twiggle mm-hmm. I can't I, do i'm that. serious that is something you you're either born with or or you're not and i want all of the children through mid-america that keep making these youtube videos trying to show that there's they have the capacity to recognize bless your jesus bless your souls (laughs) let it go not we ain't all made we ain't built for twiggling (laughs) twiggling ain't for everybody (laughs) not for everybody i'm never gonna have the same booty as my cousins but just my side of the family my 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 dna comes from my mother and i've stared at her button hips for 44 years and that is what I look at in the mirror. Ours, ours doesn't do that. So you're exactly right. right. It is, it is about shifting the focus um, to what what I have and being appreciative for what I have. The whole um, to, to kind of bring it back full 360 is I want to also highlight like this is certainly something that I struggle with, but I'm it's a struggle that I'm proud of because for me it means that I'm actively. Um, working to love myself. So what I, right. so I, it doesn't come easily for me. It's not something that I take for granted. Um, I do think there is um, meaning in how there is value in being aware of how you present yourself to the world and having pride in that. So I, I'm, that is a part of who I am. I am femme in my womanist identity. I like um, I like being able to feel good about how I look when I walk out of the house. So I'm not challenging any of that stuff. What I'm saying is that I'm having to renegotiate what that looks like for me at this point in my life with this body in my life. But it is something that I'm actively struggling with. But the good part about it is um, I have these affirmations that I am doing the work in the right way through the lens of my daughter. So a couple of things that happened recently, um, we we went on a little vacation and we were out by the pool area um, where we were staying at the resort and they had this lazy river. And so um, if you're unfamiliar, it's think about like basically a pool, but in a loop. And with these with um, kind of self-perpetuating gentle waves. So it's basically like you can get they had little inner tubes and rafts that you could ride around. And or if you wanted to like she did kind of she's tall enough. The, the water is kept at low, um, low depth. So she was tall enough to kind of be able to wade through the water and bounce through. And at some point we got separated. Um, she got further around the loop than the waves were carrying me and she was out of my line of sight. And then when I got around, I didn't see her. And so I kind of got to one place and I stopped and I waited and I had a mild panic attack <laughs> because we were at a resort. I didn't know where my child was um, and really was stuck at about like, how do I like I think staying in one central spot with the with the hope that she would come back around is the best way to solve this. But if after enough time doesn't pass, I need to get up and leave and see if I can find security and, you know, thinking through. So then I started asking parents that I had seen in the resort. Hey, have you seen my daughter? And then finally, this gentleman came up to me and he was like, she's right on the other side. She's with some other women. And so I was like, oh, my God, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Jump up out of the pool, run to the other side. And there she is. And she's equally panic stricken. And um, the, there was such grace um, and kindness with these other women to have sat with her. And they, you know, they said very clearly that she didn't really want to stop because she, she um, they said she can kind of we could kind of tell that she was like, I don't know you people. So I don't know if I should let you help me or not. So all of my messages about stranger danger probably had come through and she was really conflicted, but she decided to stop with them. And they told me 
that when they asked her, like, well, what does your mom look like? Her immediate response was, she's a brown lady and she's beautiful and she wears glasses. Like that was her response. And I thought like, oh, my, like my baby thinks I'm beautiful. And like this, the fact that those were the things that she used to describe me uh, was such an affirmation and heartwarming for me. And then just earlier this week, the whole story that kind of brought me around to wanting to talk about this was her saying to herself, just a well, to me, but out of the complete blue, she said, mommy, I really like the way I look. And I said, well, I like the way you look, too. She was like, I think I have a really cute face. And I said, you do have a really cute face. And I like wearing my glasses. And I was like, and you look adorable in your glasses as well. She said, and I'm also very talented and I'm funny and I am good at art. And she just started rattling off all of these attributes about herself. With no shame, she, but also no doing? hubris. Is she running for president of the United States? Like, what <laughs> she is she doing? Because <laughs> let me tell you, at age six, she would do an infinitely better job than the current ha. that we have. Ha ha. That's a whole different podcast. Um, but it just was such like that conversation and that little moment brought so much joy for me because it told me that I must be doing something right and how I talk about myself, how I present my feelings about myself and how I affirm her that she has such a positive um, perception of herself. And that is the that, that is the narrative that I, I want to keep hearing her say when she's 16, when she's 26, when she's 76. I won't be around when she's 76, but I want that to be her imprint for life. And for me, the work comes around making sure that I continue to affirm myself and to love myself so that she constantly sets. So I constantly set that as a standard for her so that there isn't ever a sense of confusion or wonder for her so that the struggle that she has doesn't have to be the same one that I have. I know that we're moving towards the end of the podcast, but I, I really just want to say this as well, because I think it's important. We spent uh, significant portions of time today talking about body image in terms of weight and food and hairstyle and all of that. But there are body image issues out there that people don't even recognize as such. And one that was very significant for me in my 20s was being a black man, being African-American and what that meant. Now, I never wanted to be white, but I sure enough did want white privilege. I'll tell you that. Mm. Um, but that translated into me not being comfortable in my own skin. Because I could not understand why it was easier for people of certain skin colors to do things in a way that it was not for me. Why couldn't I get this role? Why can't I do that job? What's wrong? Like, it just didn't make sense to me. Because I, in my 20s, coming from humble beginnings, didn't understand necessarily the way the world works. Because my mother was not a woman who taught me the evils of the world. And so it took me some time to learn that. But in the journey to understanding how people place power and greed in front of humanity, I spent some time in my 20s not liking the skin color mm. I had. And so I think it's important and, and it's. It's there was a time when I would have never admitted that. Right. There was a time when that would have brought me great shame. But I think that if we don't stand and really say these types of things to other people who may be going through something similar, who may be struggling, that th you need to understand this too shall pass. Because today, you know, the only thing when I when I describe myself to people a, a, in terms of my blackness, it reminds me of that I'm black man and I'm blacker than black and I'm a black man <laughs> and I am black any black, you know, because <laughs> I'm black. You all go ahead day. and have that moment. Black all day in every way. Every so single that, way. Right. So we can. Yeah, I think maybe we should. Maybe we need to have a conversation about this um, in one of our future shows, because to me. So the way when I hear you say that. Um, my psychologist brain says that's the issue of racial identity, which is which is a very different conversation, not a very different, a related, but a different conversation that is equally, I think, complex and worth talking about. And a part of 
uh, racial identity comes along with um, your phenotype, like what you look like in the, right. in the physical body right. that you represent, right. because that is a large part of how we actually classify races in this society. So but, we, but we, to that point, to that point, when we often talk about racial identity, what we don't talk about is how it translates into bodies. And as a person who has worked in the wellness community and dealt with women of color who have come to me with such horrible, hor- and I mean horrible, uh, um, ideas about their bodies, about I'll never be able to this, or I can't do that, or my body doesn't do that, or my favorite is, oh, you know, we aren't built like that, so. And it's just not true. So I think yeah, I that is an important part to 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 really bring up is because it does sort of play into body image as well. Because if you don't mm-hmm. like the color of your skin, the way you look, the texture of your hair, mm, <laughs> where do you go from there? How do you how do you deal with that? You know? Yeah. So and and I will just say this that the the research. The I would say the good research that looks at body image specifically for black women does take that into account. And that there is a recognition that uh, skin color. So there is a thing called colorism that we have to take into account. Skin color matters. Um, hair texture matters. Size and shape of nose. All of these things become more or get added to the conversation. Uh, around body image when we talk about black women in specific. But I also think there's a separate issue here that I'm in terms of like body ability, right? Um, That I'm hearing you talk about. And that, that to me feels a little bit connected to racial identity uh, in the, at least in the way that I'm hearing it, but you know, we'll have show show. We'll have post show uh, dialogue about that to figure out where, where we want to take the best way to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I appreciate you a lot today. I think for me, uh, what I know to be true is that what you said quite eloquently earlier, that it does take effort and it does take work to, to have and maintain a positive body image. And one of the things that I, I recognize for me is that I have to be able to talk about these things. So today, being able to talk about it here was equally beneficial for me as I hope it was for for those who were listening. Just to be reminded that there are pieces that I may not be comfortable with, but by and large, for the most part, I love my body. Um, And the older I get, for sure, the more I become uh, focused on health and well-being that I I have ever been before. And that, to me, uh, translates to longevity, like I want to be around for a while, a while and I want to have good quality of life. And uh, this conversation was really helpful in reminding me about where to really put my emphasis and attention in making sure that I'm able to cultivate and maintain the sort of uh, body image and sense of self that I want to hold for myself. So here is your hashtag mental health homework for the week. All you listeners is to very simply get all up close and personal with yourself and I really would like there to us uh, and I'm going to do this too I'm going to do this too uh, to, to intentionally uh, spend some time doing a little bit of self gazing this week and finding something new about your body every day that you value and appreciate and just make a note of that see what changes for you in the time between um, now and then to see if if shifting your perspective, if being intentional about loving yourself helps to bring about a little bit more self-love and a little bit more of a positive body image for you. Sound good? Sounds great. <laughs> you, are you and the muted microphone. I, I keep my microphone muted because I just listened. No, as you were saying it, I was, I was saying to myself, your mental health homework is what I do every single day like even things like hmm I really like my skin so 
I use a certain type of scrub on it, not too harsh, not, something with a nice oil base to keep me moisturized. Because, you know, yes. it's rough in these streets. You got to keep moist. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be dry up in these streets. You know? <laughs> so and it's just and it is funny, like even the act of like, seriously, like the act of washing your hair. For me, it's just loving because I'm just mas- massaging my scalp and just I enjoy those things. And mm-hmm. it, it may sound it may sound 